And then it just, see, I got it used to marketing to raise my book subtly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fell. <laughs> Tell us about your awesome launch parties that you've got going. Well, four events have come together. The first one is going to be at my dance studio. And it's going to be held in February during National Eating Disorder Awareness Week. Your dance studio, meaning the place you go dance in Boulder? Yes. Alchemy of Movement? Alchemy of Movement. And um, I wanted to hold it there because I didn't want a traditional bookstore. And I didn't want anything with food and drink. And I did want something that celebrated this journey, that allowed all the people coming to celebrate this journey with me. And dance was so a much a part of my healing my relationship with my body and such a daily joy to me. So it was clear that I wanted it there. And then I'm having a series of readings, one at a small coffee shop in my neighborhood where a group of us read once a month our poetry. And another one is in a small business called Moon Dance in Denver, Moon Dance Botanicals, where I know the owner. Um, it's a fabulous little spa and botanical uh, cream and cosmetic company. She has a beautiful back room and she offered to sell my book and have a reading there and it's a beautiful location. And then there's a, a Mont Blanc pen store here oh. in Denver. Oh, how fun. Yeah. And, um, and they apparently have an author series where they have authors come every month. Of, I think about three authors and sign books. Oh, wow. So I'm going to be one of the, there's going to be several poets in March. Oh, very So I'll cool. be one of them. Oh, fun. And all four of them really came about, not by my sitting down and developing some marketing plan, but about my sitting with the intention and going about my lives and what feeds me and the people in my life. M mentioning this to someone or having an inspiration during yoga class. So it all came up, up, up quite organically and, and delightfully. So what's great about you, Carolyn, is that you've gotten your book out into the world and you've got some great promotional ideas to get it in the hands of your readers. A lot of writers I encounter don't want to do that. They're not willing to do the promotional work they would rather just stay home and write. And for a long time, I knew you as that writer mm -hmm. who really never wanted to do anything to get your work out to the world. And then you made a shift. And I'm curious about how you came to embrace the fact that you needed to do some, make some effort to get the book into the world. Yeah, that was a huge transformation. The whole process was transformative for me in lots of ways. To go from a little introverted writer to someone who's quite happy to step in front of the camera, as it were. Um, and I think a lot of the process, some of it was just my devotion to this manuscript mm -hmm. that had held me so well in my recovery and my writing for so many years. And part of it was my devotion to get that out. And part of it was everything I had to go through last year in terms of working with the publisher to get an actual book out. It caused, caused me to do all kinds of challenging things that I had never done before. And I had to do it because I was working with these creative partners, the publisher and the designer. And I could do it. And even though I was overwhelmed or scared at times, I did do it. And it's like that whole process was in between the writing and the getting the book in the world. And it just formed me as the person who could then step out and promote this book as it deserves to be promoted. I still swear if I hadn't gone through the whole process with, with all of us, with your coaching and everyone else, I would have just thought I was insane. I'm so inadequate to this task, it is taking so long, but it was the same for everyone. <laughs> that's true, and and that's the thing that people say, you know, for me it took 10 years to write my novel, and it does take, it can take yeah. a long time, not everyone will, but to know that it's normal, that it's taking a long time. Yeah. And every book yeah. has its timing and its pace. Yeah, that was one of the things I'd written down. I said, instead of feeling inadequate, I felt normal. That's awesome. End of the affair. To lay home alone, husband away, business. When I arrive, loneliness howls a welcome. On its heels marches an urge, a little late night snack, an offer to ease my empty bed. Tonight I choose to indulge hollowness only. Confronted, sadness dashes leaving behind long, scaly shadows. Cravings linger, whisper, charm, seduce, beg, jab, rage. I refuse this con whose promise rings hollow, gone tomorrow. Tonight, 
I resign myself to be an old maid. Lament amplifies as I abandon my dear hero, forbidden pleasure, food as comfort. Um, I've had this interesting path as both a poet and a journal writer and now a journal writing facilitator um, and now a, po a poet with a published book, Hunger Speaks. And I started off, the first journal entry I ever wrote was in the Eating Disorder Clinic. And then I journaled for years and years because it is the only way that I know myself. And I'm, I feel very blessed to have, somehow I've had the wherewithal to keep going with that. And my journal writing eventually evolved into writing poetry, which fed both my creative side and my recovery in entirely different ways. And I worked on the poems for a long time and loved it and continued to do my private journal writing. And then at some point, the manuscript was actually on hold. The manuscript was done, and I was taking a little pause, not sure how to move forward, whether I wanted to pursue traditional publishing or self-publish, a little intimidated by both. And a woman that I had worked with as a journal facilitator was offering some training to become a journal writing facilitator. And I knew that would be fabulous, and I fell in love with the work immediately. Is that Kay Adams? That is Kay Adams, Kathleen Adams. Is it, she has the Center for Journal Therapy? Yes. Okay. And um, did some training with her and became certified. And then, coincidentally, just as I sort of turned my attention away from the manuscript, but continued to go to the meetings of my publisher's association, the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, and a woman popped up at a meeting who was a brand new publisher and mentioned all the things she was interested in, including poetry. So she and I connected immediately, and the fact that I was offering writing workshops got her attention too as a way to promote my book and my work and my name and all that, the platform, as they say. So um, so things have come together in this lovely switch just about the time I was ready to become a writing workshop facilitator more full-time. This publishing opportunity came up, and I, I worked with the publisher and the designer and when that was done, started doing some journal writing workshops, and it's all just snaked together or braided together in a lovely way. Tell me how. Tell us how you you see using the journal therapy and and sharing your book. Well, the way the way I teach the journal therapy at the at na, right now is based on Kate, Kathleen Adams' book, Journal to the Self which has about 20 different techniques that, that you use, and those techniques are taught in a particular way. And what I hope to evolve eventually, um, I would love to use these poems which tell my story in Hunger Speaks of the process of recovering from an eating disorder, to take these poems one at a time and bring them to other people, not as here's my story, but as here's a poem about pain or about recovery. Write about what that brings up in you what images or memories or hopes come up through your pen. And in that way, I could also integrate perhaps a dialogue technique, a character sketch, some of the Kathleen Adams techniques. So, so I see them as coming together in um, workshops that, that I personally will call writing the wings of our recovery. That's awesome. I'm Carolyn Jennings. I'm a poet from Colorado. I am the author of Hunger Speaks, a memoir told in poetry. And I also facilitate journal workshops called Writing the Wings of Our Lives.